Welcome to TRS Clips, India's fastest learning portal. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon. So I had COVID about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and I couldn't work at all. I couldn't write, I couldn't create. So I just figured that, yo, let me watch as many great movies as I can. And I watched a gorgeous movie that stayed with me. It's a little heavy. I recommend you watch it. I think you'll really appreciate it. I believe it's called Arrival. Have you seen this? I have. Uh, it's about uh, the communication between humans. Linguistics. And linguistics. Yes. It's Arrival, right? Arrival it's Arrival, yes. Um, it's a heavy movie. It's, it is it, a very heavy movie, yes. It's it's meant not for masala cinema goes. It's meant for people who think. Uh, the basic gist, without, without revealing plot details, is that, okay, aliens have arrived on Earth. They're possibly friendly, possibly not. And human beings don't know how to interact with aliens. Same aliens don't know exactly how to interact with human beings because there's a language barrier. Imagine 2,000, 3,000 years ago, someone in India goes to Japan. How are they going to interact? They'll say, oh, me, me. Then a Japanese person will say the word for me, me. Uh, they'll say the word for yes. Japanese person will say the word for yes. Um, so they've shown this whole interaction between humans and aliens. Eventually, they sort of learn how to communicate with each other. They give each other names, all that. And the final kind of plot explosion in the movie is that humans realize the secrets of the alien's language and how our language is sort of linear. Like when I'm saying, okay, so my name is Ranveer Alabadia, you are Abhijit. It's linear. It's linear, yes. <clears throat> but aliens don't, in that movie, don't talk in a linear language. They talk in a circular language. Yes, yes. Uh, where you can read a sentence probably backward and forward. And there is a concept, sort of concept of time travel in that, um, in, in hidden in their language. And the reason aliens come down to the earth is to uh, show humans their own advancements in science, in language, in all these things. Uh, so that's what I gained from that movie. Uh, once I'd like to highlight what you gained, again, as a physicist, you're watching that movie. And I'm sure it must have kind of uh, turned some light bulb on in your head also. But obviously, we'll also talk generally about aliens. So it's a very interesting thought experiment. These movies and uh, science fiction books are essentially thought experiments. What if you had this sort of a situation or this sort of a dialogue between an alien and a human? So how would we go ahead and proceed and try to communicate? And what if tri time travel were possible? So what, what exactly is time, right? Is it linear? Is it circular? Is it something else? Hmm. So these are the concepts that you explore in these stories. This is a new concept that was there. Mm -hmm. which I have not come across before. The linguistics of uh, communication between aliens and humans, that's never been explored before as far as I understand. But yes, aliens could be very different from us. We are carbon-based creatures, right? Our bodies are carbon-based. The chemistry is carbon-based. You could have aliens who are silicon-based or <laughs> who are based on something else entirely, mm -hmm. right? For example, on, on, the, uh, on Saturn's moon Titan, the temperature is, is uh, minus 200 something degrees. But it has liquid flowing over there, which is hydrocarbons. Okay, so there could be a whole different kind of biology over there, which is completely alien to what we have. And what if that kind of situation somewhere else in some other solar system would produce an intelligent species? Mm. Now, how would we communicate with that? Right? So that is one of the interesting questions that arises out of a, out of a story like this. Mm. But the bigger question is, do aliens exist? Right? If they are there, where are they? Where are the, all the aliens? How come we have seen no signs of aliens? Right? Because we have been searching. We have been searching. We have these radio telescopes and all that which search for signals and pulses. And so far, we haven't found anything concrete, you know, like unmistakable sign of some civilization or intelligence. So that is the big question, the Fermi paradox. Where are all the aliens? Right? And there are a number of, uh, I don't know, possibilities. First of all, it's possible that our instruments are too rudimentary and primitive. It's like you have a Morse code machine and you're trying to beep, 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 send it. <laughs> and these guys have extremely advanced technology, mm. right? So maybe we are too, we are too backward. Mm. We think we are very evolved, but compared in the, in the galactic scheme of, scheme of things, we are like ants, for mm. example. I mean, if you were to explain to an ant why you have a, why you have a mall and why you have uh, all these things, the ant won't understand at all, right? You just can't get it through into that, uh, that creature's brain. Mm. Similarly, there could be an enormous disparity in intelligence and uh, technology. The other thing is that uh, alien technology, if it is an advanced civilization, it would not leak out uh, energy. So if you look at the Earth at night, you see it glow because the entire planet is covered with lights, right? 
Now there is a huge wasted wastage of energy because the light mm. should be directed downwards, not upwards. Mm. So we are wasting. We are extremely energy inefficient. An advanced civilization would not be energy inefficient. It would not beam out random random noise into the universe. Mm. Right. The communications would be very very uh, energy secure. So there are lots of uh, concepts that we have to think about and lots of possibilities why we haven't actually come across alien civilizations and maybe it's a good thing maybe they are dangerous maybe they don't want us to evolve and become uh, advanced to their level mm. so that is one of the big issues and in the fields of 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 research you know because you've studied the solar system this much do you believe that there's a possibility that aliens could be a part of our solar system also and we've not explored see if you look at the history of the earth the earth is approximately 4 billion years old now we know that life on earth emerged around 3.8 billion years ago as soon as the planet cooled a little bit so life just seems to have spontaneously evolved or arisen on earth because of the the chemistry the geochemistry of the of the planet and we know that mars had a similar kind of environment about a billion billion and a half 2 billion years ago similar to earth it was a very wet planet it was warm So why is it not possible that there could have been microbial life on Mars? Hmm. And there are other planets, other moons, for example, moons of Saturn and Jupiter, where we know there is a where there are large bodies of water. Hmm. For example, I think it's Europa that has a yeah, subsurface yeah. ocean. Yes. There's Ganymede that has a bigger surf, subsurface ocean than Earth. And if the ocean, if the water is liquid, it means it is warm, and it means there could be biochemistry over there, and it could also create life. So in my opinion, I think it's highly probable that there is at least microbial life. in our own solar system outside the earth mm. but as far as intelligent life goes i don't think there's any intelligence at least what we recognize as intelligence mm. in our solar system mm. but there are billions and billions in the milky way itself there are about 100 billion stars and in the observable universe there are about 1 trillion galaxies so you can imagine how many stars there are right 10 to so 21 22 so it's statistically absurd to think there is no life out there or even that there's no intelligent life out there mm. i am convinced that there is intelligent life out there it's just that the universe is too vast and too empty for us to have found it thus far mm. and maybe we don't know how to look for it maybe mm. we not advanced enough to look for it mm.